Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are getting stuff done around the house. We will be undecorating, meal prepping, and doing some freeze drying. So let's get to it. So we're going to start by taking down some of my 4th of July decorations. One of my subscribers, when I was decorating for 4th of July, suggested that I technically could leave these decorations up until Labor Day, but since Aubrey's birthday is just around the corner from that holiday, I figured I'd already be kind of getting ready for her birthday, maybe decorating a little bit early, so I figured it was time to take these down. I meant to do a craft with this glitter vase filler and some of these old magnets that I had, but I didn't get around to it, so I will be tucking these away and maybe doing something with them next year. And while I continue to pack up the stuff, I just wanted to know what are some questions that you have for me? I was thinking I could do like a question and answer video um, answering any of the questions that you guys have. You know, ask me whatever you guys want to know down below in the comments and I will hopefully get some questions and compile them and give you guys some answers in an upcoming video. All right, now that the decorations are packed away and back in our master closet where I store everything, we are going to be moving on to our freeze dryer. Now the day prior, I actually put some frozen trays of blended raw egg into the freeze dryer. And so this has been freeze drying for a really long time and it was done with the initial cycle. And what I'm gonna be doing is taking out each tray and actually weighing it and then I will be putting the trays back in the freeze dryer to let them freeze dry for about three hours before I check their weight again. Now the reason that you want to do this is you really want to make sure that all of the moisture that was in the food has been taken out. So if you weigh a tray 
day and it, you know, is a certain weight. And then you freeze dry it longer for, you know, a couple more hours and the tray weighs less than the previous time that you checked it. That means more moisture has been taken out. And if any bit is left in the food, you can actually have your food go bad when stored properly even because there is still moisture in the food. So really what you want to do is weigh the food, throw it back in, let it freeze dry a little bit longer, then take it out, and you want it to weigh the same amount over the course of a couple checks. This way you know that all of the moisture has been taken out and it won't go bad when stored. I will come back to these freeze dried eggs later in the video, but let's go ahead and move on to doing some meal prep. So it's been on my to-do list lately to make a yummy pork barbecue recipe. And I've shared this recipe about two years ago, right around the time I had Jack. And my mom really did all the cooking and, you know, let me film it. And it made it a little bit easier for me to put out content just, you know, newly postpartum. But this is a really delicious and pretty healthy meal in my opinion. But I'm not going to be making it all today. I am prepping the carrots today as well as the celery. And on a different day, I will be chopping up some onions, getting the pork cooked, and dealing with the rest of that. So make sure you guys stay tuned and subscribe if you guys haven't already so that you don't miss that video. But essentially, I peeled my carrots and I am chopping them up into very fine pieces. Same goes for the celery. I wanted really fine pieces being chopped up. And then I will just be putting these in a bag and storing it away in my fridge until I'm ready to use it later. So moving on, I wanted to prep a cucumber to put in my freeze dryer to make like cucumber chips. So I peeled my cucumber and put it through my food processor so that I would get very thin slices of the cucumber. Now after having, I've already freeze dried it since this video was filmed and I think I should have made the cucumber slices a little bit thicker because when all the moisture is sucked out, these ended up being paper thin and you know not even like thinner than a normal chip so it was I don't know I think it would have been more of a crunchier texture had I made these slices a little bit thicker but after I went ahead and sliced the cucumber 
which using the food processor, by the way, made it so much easier than having to try to cut equal slices using a knife. But after I did that, I put the single slices on pieces of parchment paper that would fit in my freeze drying trays. And then I sprinkled some ranch seasoning on top. And I was really hoping that this would just be like a really yummy snack and obviously healthy. You're just eating cucumber with some herbs on top. So that was my hope. But I have to say that after they came out of the freeze dryer, like I think yesterday as I'm recording this voiceover, I don't know, I, I didn't think that they were super great. I don't eat cucumber also all the time, so it's not a flavor that I'm used to having in my mouth. But I think if you like snacking on cucumber and if I had made the slices a little bit thicker, I think it would have been pretty yummy. but we're gonna to toss this tray in the freezer so that it can cut off some time when I go to freeze dry the cucumbers. And then I figured I would do a little experiment with my celery. I filled up a glass with some water and put the bottom of the stalk of celery in it. And since filming this, we actually um, have some leaves starting to come out from the center of the celery. So hopefully I will get you know twice the amount of celery than what I paid for. So now that all of the dishes have been you know, put away in the dishwasher and we've kind of cleaned up, we are gonna be giving these scraps from my food cuttings to our chickens. If I didn't have chickens, these would probably go in like a compost pile, which I'm still trying to master. Being a Southern California girl, I was never, you know, fully immersed in farm life or even like real like homesteading. And so even though it's always been my dream, you know, that wasn't kind of my reality and my surroundings. So I'm trying to learn as I go. And sometimes that just means mastering like one skill at a time. So hopefully I'll, you know, get a good routine and, and learn how to best make compost and, you know, get my plants to grow good fruit and all of that stuff. Right now, it's kind of like, let's take care of the chickens, like, let's take care of the kids. And hopefully, you know, God will fill in the cracks where I am, you know, not doing so hot and make sure that, you know, at least my plants don't die. They may not produce great fruit at right now, but hopefully they won't die and I can feed them what they need later on to get a good harvest. But before my family headed out to dinner, I did want to harvest one tiny little strawberry from my backyard. I thought it looked really beautiful. I probably could have let it ripen a little bit longer, but that's okay. And then after dinner, I came home, got the kids to bed, and it is time to package up our egg powder. So by this time, it's late at night, the eggs have been freeze drying for many hours, and I got a consistent weight for each of the trays over the course of a few hours at a time. So based on my current knowledge of freeze drying, that means that these eggs should be good to store away, and they will be good for anywhere from 20 to 25 years if stored correctly which I really hope I did a good job storing these guys. Essentially, I am blending up the egg powder in my food processor and scooping out about, I wanna say 12 to 18 eggs in each of these Mylar bags. Then I will be throwing in an oxygen absorber and sealing it with a little like heat sealer that came with our freeze dryer. Storing it in the mylar bags should make the eggs last longer than if I had stored them in a mason jar and vacuum sealed it. However, I kind of feel like I trust a mason jar more because the mylar bags for who knows may have pin needles like holes in them and then everything can go bad so I really don't want that but that's just kind of my paranoid anxious self coming out. I'm hoping that everything is fine and these bags will be good for a really long time. So you might be wondering why are we storing freeze-dried eggs? Well 
as you guys know, I have a lot of chickens. The new chickens are actually starting to lay eggs now. We actually got our second white hen in our new coop, laid an egg yesterday, and I believe it was her first time because I found it not in the nesting box and it had cracked and you know it's kind of like their first time you know it's never perfect <laughs> but anyways we're getting more eggs now and i don't eat you know hypothetically we could get like 15 eggs a day which is way too much like as far as how much i actually consume and my kids ex consume each day so we're getting a lot of eggs and we're not using them all but there are periods of time where the chickens don't lay eggs and if all of them decide to not lay eggs for a couple of months i'd like to have you know fresh eggs ready to use in my kitchen without having to go to the store so by freeze drying them and making them shelf stable for up to 20 25 years all you have to do is take two tablespoons of this egg powder and mix it with two tablespoons of water so equal parts water to egg powder and that amount is equivalent to one large egg so if I am making a recipe that calls for, you know, one egg, which like my concha recipe calls for one egg, I believe, if I remember correctly, then I can just use this powder and make my conchas and not need to have any like fresh eggs on hand. I also really just like the idea of having this stored away if there's ever a natural disaster or, you know, something where I can't go to the store or all the stores are out of eggs or you know whatever it is I like knowing that I have this tucked away and you know it, it'll be good for a very long time and assuming that I keep doing this with my chickens eggs I can dip into this egg powder you know I don't need to wait 20 years to dip into this I can dip into it you know relatively soon and just freeze dry another batch and save that for another future use and it may seem odd but I do think I will be gifting some egg powder in mason jars to my family members for Christmas. I know it's not your typical gift, but it's something that is somewhat homemade and I think really useful. I think it would be cool to have this stored away in your pantry in a nice dark place and then you know you go to make something and you realize you're out of eggs. Great. I at least have eggs in the pantry that I can break out and use and not need to worry about running to the store now and kind of throwing off my day. But anyways, that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys found it informational, motivating, or at least entertaining. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you are new, again, I would love it if you stick around and subscribe and check out all of my motherhood content, and I will catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.